Hi, and welcome back to Grassroots Crypto, where I like to teach people about crypto. Hope everybody is doing well today. So it's been a while since I've done a video. I took a bit of a break, but now I'm back and ready to get into it. I want to start with an explanation of Thorchain's yield bearing since. So that's this particular feature here. A few people have asked to look at the uh, inner workings. So first, I'm going to start with a recap of what synthetics are. Um, and then I'm going to go into the details of the synth vault and then how all that works with the POL. I've already done a number of videos on synthetics that you can look at here. So whilst I try and recap briefly what synths are, um, if you want more of a detailed understanding, then you can have a look at uh, particularly these three videos here. If you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And all the links I use in this video, like the ones up here, will be in the description below. Uh, additionally, I'll add a timeline so you can fast forward and skip to the uh, particular area as you need. So this is the PR that we'll be going through. And what the goals written here, what they're trying to do, I just want to explain um, two goals as I see it. So first is to grow the network by incentivizing uh, more things to be created that adds more liquidity in the pools, they become deeper, that attracts more liquidity, uh, produces cheaper swaps because the pools are deeper, and that increases the TVL. And second, is a way to earn interest with single asset exposure. Because as a liquidity provider, you always have dual asset exposure. When you add an asset half, uh, even 100%, half of that would be sold off for Rune, so you're always exposed to Rune. You may not want that. So this particular PR leverages synths in order to get um, yield with single asset exposure. Synthetics without the vault and PL stuff has been live in mainnet for some time. You can see the article here and there's the date. So let's do a recap on synths uh, using some pictures that I've created. When you mint, or in order to mint a synthetic uh, asset, you need to have Rune. So you use Rune to mint, say, synthetic BDC off the BDC pool. Um, and then, as an example, if you have like normal Bitcoin, it becomes like a double swap where you swap, like allows one swap for actual Bitcoin to Rune, and then use that Rune to um, mint a synthetic. The Rune stays in the pool, but the synthetic is created. And the redemption is the same thing, just reverse, the, the synthetic BDC um, gets destroyed and then your rune is returned. Um, and then just reversing this particular example, I take synthetic Bitcoin, um, from there I can redeem my rune and then that, because that exits the pool and then I can use that rune to swap for um, actual Bitcoin. Now, the system will honor the redemption. So if this is one BDC, it will always um, be or one synthetic BDC it will always be one actual layer one BDC. I'm obviously minus fees when you swap it out, but it will always honor the redemption value of the synthetic asset back to the layer one asset. They're back 50, 50 in the pool. So when you do an asymmetrical addition of Bitcoin into the pool, um, whilst it's 100% rune, um, it gets essentially half it gets sold for, for Bitcoin because ARBs do that to balance out the pool and it will sit as BDC and Rune or asset add Rune inside of the pool. And within a pool, you have uh, liquidity units, like normal liquidity units, and then you have um, dynamic uh, synth liquidity units, or AK synth units, to differentiate between what's actually held by liquidity units and what's um, the collateral required for the redemption of outstanding um, synthetics. So this is said quite here by uh, Alain Bailina. Uh, since I'm not subject to impairment loss, we'll talk about that in a sec, simply because the protocol honors the redemption value of the collateral, not the units behind them, which actually change uh, dynamically. So we'll go through that in a sec. But yes, yeah, since themselves here, uh, we're here are not actually subject to impairment loss either. So how does that work? Well, we have our liquidity pool here that's made up of liquidity units and synth units. Then if the pool grows, because you know, heaps of fees, heaps of trade volume and stuff like that, then uh, liquidity is gonna move away from the, the, the synth side of the house through to liquidity providers. So they're actually gonna win in this case because it has to bring it back to the, um, the required collateral value. The synth units need to uh, match the required synth collateral value. So it, it can't expand, it just needs to hold that um, amount. So therefore uh, liquidity providers um, get additional liquidity and they win. The reverse is also true. 
if there's a contraction, massive impairment loss within the uh, the pool, then um, obviously the the synth units will um, will reduce. So liquidity is taken away from the liquidity providers and put to um, the synth units in order to match that um, required collateral there. So in this situation, uh, liquidity providers lose. However, they also still have impairment loss protection, uh, full protection if they say they're over 100 days. So essentially, what that, that's saying is you have the synth units, when the synth required collateral, that's you know X, and uh, the synth units being Y, Whenever this changes, uh, for whatever reason, increases, changes, um, then this will change to match. And it's done like every couple of blocks, you know, every couple of seconds. This is dynamically changed, which will affect the position of the liquidity provider units here. A couple of more notes on this. So, yep, this must equal that. Um, so the synth units will change their dynamic uh, in relation to this. That's why synthetics have no impairment loss is great so the synths are actually capped um i think at the time i was doing the research 15 percent but it might be 30 percent doesn't really matter it was designed for 33 you can look at mirima for this particular value and here it is here i think that's 30 percent um we're just going to go 15 because that's what it was at the time this was actually written actual value doesn't really matter it's just you know understanding the concept introduced recently is a thing called um Luvi, which is liquidity unit value index, and that tracks the, the pool, I'd like to say pool performance and health over time. And it's gonna have like a snapshot to actually get a Luvi score. And that'll see whether or not the pool's grown because in theory, a pool should always grow. It's always getting fees, um, but it can obviously, you know, if there's impairment loss, it's not gonna have a good effect on the growth. You can read more specifics here uh, regarding Luvi. Or you can read this particular article that's got all the specific information about Luvi as well. And the, the effects on synths, because uh, synths have an interesting effect within uh, the, the, the Luvi score. So that's synthetics. Let's talk about the synth bolt. And this was also in my original videos. Um, so we've, we, we take normal Bitcoin and we create synthetic Bitcoin through this process. And then from there, I can take my synthetic Bitcoin and put it into the vault. And that's going to earn interest. So this allows a person to hack, get interest with single asset exposure because within a liquidity, within a, um, a liquidity pool, it's always going to be dual asset exposure because it's asset and room. So we have single asset exposure here. And example, I guess you could earn two Bitcoin over a certain amount of time with a high interest rate, whatever. You can earn interest. And then when you redeem that, you're going to have, you know, obviously more Bitcoin than what you started with. So how does all this work? Well, currently, uh, just to understand how income works, you have exchanges, UIs, when you do swaps, that produce swap fees um, in the slip fee. And then that produces system income along with block rewards from the emission curve, uh, which we'll talk about in a sec. And then that goes to the incentive pendulum and that essentially splits the rewards to liquidity providers and node operators, depending on how much is total pooled versus total bond. I can read about that on the docs. And that's how uh, liquidity providers get their income. Now, anything within the uh, liquidity pool is going to be yield bearing. It's going to generate income. That includes the synth collateral. Now, currently, if a, when a synth holder holds a synthetic, they're not going to earn any interest if they just sit there and they can use the synth to, to ARB or do whatever they want. Um, however, the, the, the earnings from this collateral goes to the liquidity providers, as we talked about before, when the pool's growing and fees are accrued. Uh, under the new model with the vault, this the half of the actual income produced by this uh, by this collateral here goes to the actual synth vault. So I take my, my Bitcoin, my synthetic Bitcoin, and then I put it into the vault, and I'm gonna get about half of the actual rewards that's generated by this. The other half goes to liquidity providers. And why would you think, why doesn't it get 100%? Well, one, they've only added one asset, which is Rune, when they minted. And then two, these synth savers are taking less risk. Like they're always gonna be in a way better off. Like they can't lose because it's not subject to impairment loss. Whereas liquidity providers, I guess, you know, with ILP aside, they can lose. Um, particularly, you know, if they withdraw before hundred days, these people should get more rewards. They're like, I think it's one, one and a half times long on that. So they're gonna get more, more benefits as well as take some, some, some losses if there are some. So they should get more income. 
So the vault uses Luvi to detect um, uh, earnings. So he said, well, is the score now going to be greater than it was before? And if it's going to be greater than zero, like if, it, you know, if it's a positive increase, then it's going to mint synthetic to the actual vault. Now we talked about the sensor capped, um, and this is a problem because all these, you know, this is due to incentivize the utilization of the vault. The actual synth cap is going to get hit very quickly, and then you can't produce any more synths, and that's very bad for your Y, so that's not good. So, how do you fix this? Well, first, let's understand the actual why there is a synth cap. So, the synth cap at 15%, or even if it was, you know, 33% as it was originally uh, designed. Um, the reason why we don't like, have this get over is if it gets too large, then the poor liquidity providers, they're, they're got a lot of exposure here because if there's a permanent loss, they can get squeezed out pretty, pretty hard because all this liquidity would need to move to cover the synths. Additionally, it can be the case if there's a large amount of synthetics that with, you know, price changes, the, the required synth collateral can be deeper than the pool. So the whole pool at this point would be insolvent and that's pretty bad. We don't want that. So having a nice cap where it's a little bit, um, whether it's 15, 30%, doesn't really matter, of the asset depth, um, then that allows for that wiggle room without liquidity providers getting um, getting into a poor shape when there's when there's impairment loss, or really not enough fees to cover the impairment loss, which is again, temporary. It's like an interest rate, a positive, and sometimes it goes to a negative. It's like a daily rate changes all the time. Over time, it's generally, uh, you're gonna be better returns, but there can be, there can be some, you know, um, times where it's not the best. So POL has been introduced in a way to allow synthetics to be minted without going over the cap. It's kind of like a bit of a, a workaround because the same problem with the synth vault was, was there before. It's still there now, you could say, and that's kind of like why they went down the Thor fire route to do things a little bit differently. Um, that didn't, you know, happen. So now it's around how do we get around the synth cap in order to provide um, or, or to do the synth vault. So now there's a thing called, well, we have the synth cap, which is 15% or 30%, whatever the asset depth. So we're gonna use 15% in my example. Uh, and then there's a new new variable called the cap range. And that equals for the cap, take away 5%, which is 10%. Now I kind of call it the PL trigger because this is the point when the PL will start. So when, when the synth utilization of the pool gets beyond 10%, greater than 10%, then um, things are gonna happen. So here I've got 14%. The reserve is going to do an asymmetrical addition of Rune to the actual um, liquidity pool. And they'll obviously become then a dual LP here because half of it will be sold off uh, for the asset or for Bitcoin, just like any other liquidity provider. So the only difference between you know, the four chain reserve and any other person in the liquidity pool is that, you know, they're the protocol. That's the only difference, but it's a normal addition there. So that means then the reserve will start to own a certain percentage. I mean, seven percent is quite high. Certain percentage of the liquidity pool. Now it's going to do this in, in little bits. It's not jumps. I think it uh, does like every 10 blocks or stuff like that. It's, it's in little increments. So there aren't huge amounts of slips. Um, uh, being done for the reserve um, and it can just trickle it in. By the reserve adding to the liquidity pool by a large amount, that obviously increases the liquidity pool utilization, that's like pure liquidity um, provision, and then that's going to reduce the synth utilization here and start to push that up back towards that PL trigger. And it's gonna continually do that until it gets above 10%. And then if, it were the case that this gets pushed up, say above 10%, then the reserve can start doing an asymmetrical removal um, of liquidity to back to the reserve, and then that would um, balance things out. So it's like this equilibrium where the reserve is increasing and removing um, its liquidity provision uh, based off the synth utilization moving within this particular range here. I have some final points here. These are the points that I wanted to raise. There's also some really good uh, points and reading here within the specification regarding the pros and cons and additional stuff. And I would encourage you to read that in addition to what I'm gonna go through. So there's minimal change with this particular design. 
Uh, nothing changed with the liquidity pool stuff. Nothing changes with synthetics. That's all in. It's the original, uh, it's pretty much the original uh, synth vault design. It's just adding POL or the, the, the reserve can become a liquidity provider in order to um, move the synth cap back up to um, a more acceptable, more desirable state. The hard cap is still respected with regards to the total pooled versus the um, total bonded because obviously, you know, this reserve they're adding to the pool adds to the total pooled and you can't have that greater than the total bonded for security reasons. Uh, the, the incentive pendulum will help enforce this as it will start to take away all of the um, rewards to liquidity providers if the total pool is getting too large and then it'll balance out when it balances out. You can read about that on the docs. Uh, I've got a point three here, something I picked up from um, Son of Odin. It's possible for the network to exceed the cap um, price changes alone can doing this going past the cap of 15 whatever percent or 30 percent um, isn't really unhealthy pool territory it just means that liquidity providers are taking on more leverage ruin exposure so having the synth value greater than the pool value so is unhealthy territory so what that means in english uh, is if this goes to 16, 17, 18 percent, and the reserve hasn't had time to catch up because it might take a little bit of time to catch up. That's okay. Um, having this exceed the total pool depth is very unhealthy territory because um, the pool is insolvent at that point. Impairment less for 100 days or more remains in place to protect liquidity providers. The deployed room from the reserve will cause the block rewards to decrease, this essentially change. Um, how much rune is produced in each block. I've got a link here um, within the uh, emission schedule part, and you can see here the reserve is a factor, the size of the reserve, how much rune is the reserve is a factor when calculating the block rewards. The synth vault only applies to the gas pools at the moment, so BDC, Ethereum, Atom, you know, the native coins on the actual uh, connected blockchains, but that might be extended later to stable coins and, and other coins. This will deepen the pool and it will allow interest with single asset exposure. That's always been the goal. So lastly, when would this be released? Um, it hasn't been released yet. Assuming extremely soon, the PR's in, the code's done, it's under review. I think this POL te testing has happened. It's continuing to happen. This is the parameter to control the um, synth asset depth I've talked about before and where to find more information. I'll be leaving links um, to all this content below. There's a good article here, um, I think under this one as well for more of a high level view. You can go ahead and have a look at this information. Well, that's the video. Uh, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. If you have any requests for videos, put them in the comment section below. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day and until next time, thanks.